This is a fourth example on the application of KKT conditions. Visit apmonitor.com slash ME575 for more videos. And also posted there are some additional worksheets and examples uh, to go through on the KKT conditions and other optimization topics. Okay, so let's go through, uh, and first of all, just go ahead and give the necessary uh, KKT conditions uh, explaining each equation. Uh, first of all, we have that our equality or inequality constraints must be feasible at our optimal solution. So just the, uh, for the explanation of this, just um, put down feasibility of inequality and equality constraints. The next one is that the gradient of the objective function at the optimal solution minus uh, the Lagrange multiplier times the gradient of the uh, equality constraints or inequality constraints at the final solution also has to equal zero. Uh, this is no direction improves the objective while being feasible. Okay, then this, the next one is uh, lambda i uh, times the constraints. Uh, that has to equal zero. Okay, now this, uh, this means that either the constraint is binding or that lambda i has to equal zero. Okay, so uh, this is the called complementary slackness. In, in uh, for this one. Okay, and then number four is that lambda i has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then for, this is only for inequality constraints. So uh, number three and four, these are only for inequality constraints. If you only have equality constraints, this doesn't apply. Okay, let's go down to our example problem now. We have a cylindrical storage tank with different costs for the sides, the base, and the top. Okay, so we uh, let's go ahead and write down our uh, dollars per feet squared uh, just for the surface area of each of these. Okay, so the bottom is most expensive, sides are next most expensive, and the top is least expensive in terms of uh, the area. Uh, one of the things that we want to do with this uh, this application is make it so that additional cubic foot of capacity costs eight dollars. Okay, and we're going to try to find the optimal diameter and height with this Lagrange multiplier. Uh, of eight dollars per foot cubed. Uh, so first of all, we're going to write out the area equations: the area of the side, the area of the base and top. Those are equal to each other. And then I'm going to write out the uh, optimization problem: minimize the cost subject to the volume equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out what the cost is for this. Uh, it's the cost per square foot uh, times the area for the side, and then also for the top and bottom. Those share a, a set the same area. Uh, so go ahead and let's just go ahead and add those two costs together and multiply by the area of the base. Okay, then subject to the volume equation, the volume of our tank is pi over 4 d squared times h, and then we also have a Lagrange multiplier of $8 per foot cubed that we want to have at our final solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out our first KKT condition. The first one is just that the volume constraint must be satisfied at the optimal solution. So the combination of height and diameter uh, must um, equal uh, a volume, okay? And then we have our KKT condition number number two. Um, this is for the gradients and the Lagrange multiplier. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out uh, this one. I'm just going to go ahead and write out uh, the the uh, the form here, uh, the gradient of f with respect to d and the gradient with of f with respect to h minus uh, this is the lambda 1, the Lagrange multiplier for the first equation, uh, times by the gradient of the, uh, the constraint uh, with respect to D and H. Okay, so let me go ahead and write this out. This is, uh, first of all, uh, the gradient of uh, the partial derivative of the objective function with respect to D, and then the partial derivative of F with respect to H as well, subtracting the Lagrange multiplier. Uh, with the uh, gradients with respect to D and H of our constraint as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, you know, the KKT conditions three and four, uh, they don't apply in this case because we only have equality constraints. We have no uh, inequality constraints. So therefore, we don't have to check uh, these conditions. Okay, so now I'm going to take just this last equation. It's just a function of one variable, which is diameter. Uh, that has to equal zero. And uh, let me go ahead and write it out. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to eliminate the solution that d equals zero. I know that's not a potential uh, solution. Also, cancel the pi, and then d equals four times c side times divided by lambda one. In this case, the optimal diameter uh, is going to be 15 
feet. I'm going to use the uh, next to last equation as well, and the height is going to equal 11.25 feet, and then I'm going to use the, finally the constraint. Okay, and that means that my volume is 1988 feet cubed, and my lambda is $8 per feet cubed. Okay, so this is the solution to the problem.